The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This is Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw Dating, preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys, and broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now your host, Nicole Hutchison. Cowboys Nation, welcome into Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw, the preferred dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys in the SWBC studio. I'm Nicole Hutchison alongside Aisha Morrison and Jazz Monet. Oh my God. That was better. <laughs> you definitely have the, a set key that you go to, though. Like that. I'm just glad that a set key? there's a set note that you want to hit. And we need to get you like an organ or something, Jazzy. Yeah, yeah. You need to fire up some neo soul behind mm, the jazz. That sounds Monet. like a whole different show. <laughs> it sounds like a great show, though. Sounds I think like a good little... relax, everybody. Absolutely. Coming in. I mean, hey, it's bye week next week. Let's jazz see. Monet is it. giving like right. <laughs> you got a unk. <laughs> Got it. Understood. Love it. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. Well, one thing I do love is a uh, practice report as well. Oh, well, I don't know. A little mixed uh, emotions about that. Right. Uh, just because, and you had pointed it out, Jazz, that uh, Mike McCarthy had mentioned that, you know, today was more of a limited practice. So kind of take it a, for a grain of salt if you are listed as a full participant. Um, because today in the press conference, he mentioned that Carson, Kalen Carson will be limited, of course, the shoulder. Um, and on on the practice report, it says full participant. So, again, just take it with a grain of salt. Uh, so, everyone is a full participant today except Marquise Bell. He was uh, out sick. And uh, Zach Martin, of course, veteran to rest day. And uh, Nick Vigil did not participate. Michael Parsons, of course, uh, did not participate as well. Thoughts on Kalen Carson, for sure, I know. or it, Actually, let's start with Deron Bland. Uh, because he was a full participant, but Mike McCarthy had mentioned also that he was kind of be a little bit uh, limited today. So having some optimism about Deron Bland possibly being back by the Lions game on Sunday. I don't Honestly, know how to feel I didn't about get that. a vibe of optimism mm. at all because mm. yesterday, as of yesterday, <laughs> both Mike McCarthy and Jerry Jones said that it was unlikely that he'd be back by Sunday. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, Stephen Jones is like, oh, yeah, there's a good chance. And everybody's like, yeah, there's a good chance. And I'm like, they just said a few hours ago it yep. was unlikely. And so him, the, the practice window for him opening this week was something that a lot of people did anticipate. Um, and I didn't make it to practice today, but the last time we saw him, he wasn't even in pads. Mm -hmm. Like, he wasn't even participating. And so I do understand the perspective of the people who were like, how on earth did he go from that to a yeah. full participant in less than a week? So the the limited practice, as Mike McCarthy described it, could explain that. Um, but even when Mike McCarthy was asked about Deron Bland playing this Sunday and said, hey, you know, we heard there's a, uh, the, uh, or the person who asked him the question said, hey, we heard there was a great chance. Mike McCarthy didn't even confirm that. Now, granted, Mike McCarthy doesn't like for things like that to be discussed in the public. Right. And I get that. Mm -hmm. But he he has said so far nothing to confirm this whole good chance thing. So I don't know if Stephen Jones is excited or has access to information. Of course, he has access to information that yeah. we don't have. But I don't know if he's basing that off of information that we don't have or if he's just excited or if his opinion is just different. But so far, if you look at what's on record, he is the only person who seems to think there's a good chance. Everyone else seems to think it's unlikely or they're taking it day by day and seeing what happens. Um, which me being a realistic person and also caring about players' health, I'm going with that because I think the last thing that we want to do is rush him back from an injury like that For sure. um, because a foot fracture is something that could not only affect his foot, but if he's compensating in a way, it could affect something else. So I'm just like, let this man heal. Yeah. You know? No, for sure. I mean, with him, I would, I kind of tend to be on your side of things where it's like, even with this game that we're going to get into is like, bro, y'all just going to have to gut it out. Yep. Like, once you get, if you were able to get a win, if you're able to get a win this weekend with the guys you have, that buy is going to be so big. You know, yes. just, I, I, I'm i not super excited about it. I am still a bit surprised that he is, he because he is a little early, no? Or is this the timeline? Was it six weeks? It was four to six weeks. Four to six weeks. So week six, it, mm. What's week five? So, yeah, it should be this week. Yeah, so, it, yeah, it should Based be this week. Based off the timeline. Yeah, and so... 
I don't know. I don't know if I would want him with the way that the Lions get down mm. in the passing game. I mean, if I'm being honest with you, they gave him some trouble healthy last year. <laughs> so I would be I would just I would just wait because I think also too when you get a guy like Micah back maybe after the bye, that's gonna help that secondary, you know, with adding to back to that pass rush. So for me, I agree. I think we should just wait it out and let him see how things go. But the mixed reports are confusing because yeah. it sounds like, you know, I, I know Nick Eatman said that, you know, they're expecting for him to play a few snaps, yeah. right? And I was like, oh, okay. Huh? Like right. zero to a thousand, like real, real quick, quick. like, oh, yeah. like <laughs> real quick. Yeah, like, what happened? So no, I guess we'll just keep our eye on it. And um, Amani, yeah, or warrior, warrior. oh, warrior. It's fine. Ayo, ayo. Boom. Uh, it's probably more realistically gonna <laughs> gonna run in this game to me mm-hmm. at this point. Yeah, uh, and also just to note that now I believe that. McCarthy also mentioned that uh, this now begins the 21-day practice window Mm -hmm. uh, for the Cowboys since Deron Blanton did practice today. Um, So now they have 21 days to pretty much decide whether they want to activate him to the 53-man roster or not. Um, So still some time. Hopefully Deron Bland uh, is healthy soon. Again, don't want to rush him back too soon. Uh, And we'd love to see him after the bye week. But now you go into, and we're going to get to the Detroit Lions matchup. You need some coffee? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, I'm um, slipping a little bit. That you're fine, you're fine. We're going to get to the matchup breakdown a little bit. But now you're without Kaylin Carson still, Deron Bland, Marshawn Nealon, Michael Parsons. Uh, Tyler Guyton is apparently supposed to be good to go on Sunday. Uh, but without all of those guys on this team, the realistic expectations, have they changed at all as far as maybe getting the win this Sunday or have they kind of uh, changed? This team better than you. Huh? This team healthier than you. <laughs> yeah. This team does a l- <laughs> most things. Yeah. With respect, they do better than you right now. However, except for defend the past. However, there is some optimism I know on my end with Mike McCarthy saying emphasizing them needing to get a, a home win. Mm-hmm. Like, and also too when you talk about we've talked about what's coming after the bye. You might want to put yourself in a position to, you know, not to be able to filter guys back in, not feel rushed to bring guys back in after the bye, like you're talking about, Jazz. Um, This feels like a big game. It is. I feel like guys are going to have to go all out to to compensate for the lack of, you know, guys specifically on the defensive side. What you got? When you say better than you, in what ways are you thinking? Better than you at running the ball. Your run mm-hmm. scheme is better. I don't know if your quarterback is necessarily better, but they make it easier for him. So it is better in that sense. Um, from a receiving aspect, they don't have a CD. Like I, I think they do have. They have Jam- uh, Jamison Williams, Amara St. Brown, uh, but their their running backs are like you might cancel out the tight ends with Sam Laporta and, and Ferguson, mm-hmm. but their running game it's, it's is spectacular. It's one of the best in the league, if not the best in the league, from how. They do things, how versatile it is. And then from a defensive side of things, I mean, they have guys really at every level that can make you pay. That secondary is pretty good. Their linebackers play around. Jack Campbell is sound. Like, they do – most most things they do better than you, and that's fine. Like, you are down a lot of guys. They're healthy right now. And off of you, a buy. Yes. They and are off, of, off a of a buy, and they are healthy. So you're, you're in a position to where, yeah, like talent-wise and all that stuff, they are ahead of you. But guys can rise to the occasion mm-hmm. if they need to. And that's – you're asking a lot. Yeah. But you're asking for that this weekend. What you got? So my my trouble with questions like this is I tend to think of like, okay, if the Cowboys do win, how would they do it? Mm. Um, because I do think that it's possible that they could. So yeah. in terms of expectations, as a person who doesn't make predictions anyway, have my <laughs> expectations changed? <laughs> Not – not really. I think they could win this game. Um, there aren't many games that I, I I look at and I'm like, no, there's no way. Um, I think it'll depend on a couple of things, though. Um, one, when it comes to the Lions, it's going to depend on that game against the Seahawks. Was that the start of a trend or was it an outlier? Mm. Because there are some things that happened during that game that if you remove them from the stats about uh about Detroit, especially when it comes to Jared Goff and uh, what he does as a quarterback, they look a little bit different on paper, right? 
Um, it's also going to depend on things for the Cowboys and whether or not what we saw against the Steelers was the start of a trend or an outlier. <laughs> so when it comes to um, – one, I'm hoping they still have some unscouted looks up their sleeve. They did some things in that Steelers game that not only did we not see before, but we didn't even expect, right? Mm -hmm. So if they still have a few of those, then that that might work to their advantage. Also, and I was trying to pull up the stat, but I didn't realize the page had reloaded um, and I wasn't connected to Wi-Fi. But give me a second. There was a stat about CD that really stood out that I was like, okay, if they can build on this, then this could work to their advantage as Talking well. about the man coverage stat? Uh, yeah, and I just pulled it up. So, CD Lamb leads the NFL in receiving yards over expected and yards after the catch over expected against man coverage this season. And that's even though he has caught just six of 16 such targets. So, he's not even catching most of the targets, and he's still leading the league in that area. Uh, Next Gen Stats goes on to say Dak Prescott has completed just 37.5% of passes when targeting Lamb versus man coverage this season, down from 70% last season. Um, So it's one of those things where, okay, if everybody's right and Dak and CD are still trying to find their chemistry and that percentage can go up and CD can still keep performing as well as he's performing against man coverage, that could also work to their advantage as well. Because the way Dak Prescott is distributing the ball or the way he did against the Mm -hmm. Steelers, one of two things is going to happen. Either CD is going to perform in such a way that he proves himself to be a threat and has to take a lot of attention on himself and it opens up other guys to make plays like Brent, uh, like Tolbert, like Jalen Tolbert, like uh, uh, Jake Ferguson, um, or they're going to try to account for all the threats, which we've seen that there are numerous now, um, not only when it comes to passing, but also running, mm-hmm. and CD is going to have a little bit of an easier time. So those are a couple of areas where I can imagine the Cowboys stepping it up just a little bit. And one thing we saw this weekend, for anyone who watches co- uh, college football, shout out to the Commodores, when it comes to an underdog, sometimes it doesn't mean that you have to step up in a miraculous way to win. Sometimes mm-hmm. it just takes a couple of slip ups yeah. from that favored team for the underdog to get a win. Yeah. So I think I think if the Cowboys do win, that's how they're going to do it by continuing on this trend of ball distribution, creativity on the offense, um, and making sure that you keep the Detroit defense on their heels. The Cowboys are three-point underdogs heading into that matchup. And a little fun stat, uh, shout-out to Patrick Nosey Walker for finding this for me. Um, The Cowboys have not started an 0-3 start at home since the 2010 season. Um, and the irony of that is that the Detroit Lions, uh, it was the Detroit Lions that they defeated that year to get their first home win in 2010. Speaking so. of, I want to oh, say funny. that is no, there's <laughs> some, that's another element of this of this game that we haven't talked about is like, when I look at the Detroit Lions and I and I said this about them earlier this season is like, they feel like they could be quite literally the most dominant team in the NFL, mm-hmm. but they just. You're waiting for them to do that because last year the roster they have this year is essentially the same one they had mm-hmm. last year, right. and yeah. they were this good last year, right? But they just would have those times, those lapses, those coaching decisions, those mistakes and stuff, and some of that showed up a little bit, you know, this this year. Mm-hmm. Even so, you, you mentioned the Seahawks game; it looked perfect. But if you go look within the game, there's some stuff that they did. You just mm-hmm. like, yeah. what's happening? <laughs> and you're just kind of waiting for them to take the reins like that. Like I, I will say they are. To me, they feel like a team that is trying to establish themselves as one of the best teams in the NFL, if not the best team in the NFL. And we talk about the state of the NFC. They see it. Yeah. They yeah. see it, too. And they have threat like threats on every side. So for me, and we, we've heard about the Amaran St. Brown stuff. We know that they felt slighted last year with the um, illegal man downfield mm-hmm. call, I believe, like, the last times you've played them, it's been a little slip up. It's been a little thing. Like one call goes your way, other way, whatever. I, I do think there's some not bad blood there, but there's some energy there. Yeah. They're sick of it. They over it. There's like, some energy I, there, y'all. I think they feel like the Lions feel like they are better than the Cowboys Absolutely. and that they have been for a couple of seasons. And, and they, they are sick of it coming down to little things. Like a couple of them have, have even mentioned in their interviews this week that they're, they're like, we don't want to leave it up to the rest. Yeah, leave so they're no coming, doubt. they're they coming into this no game ready not only to win, yeah. but to dominate. So that attitude, um, it, it's going to come into play. Yes. And so when you're talking about what you think needs to happen in this game for them to win, listen. You got to control the line of scrimmage. We're going to get to that. 
Mm-hmm. Transition. Mm-hmm. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that real <laughs> My fast. No, you're fine. Real fast. Uh, in what way? In what ways? Uh, because we look on paper right now, the Lions are coming off a of bye week, so pretty much healthy right now. Um, you talk about them coming in in week four, putting a season high, scoring a season high 42 points against the Seahawks. Uh, their run game is, you mentioned it, off the charts. Uh, and I know, I believe it's four straight. Uh, combined rushing yards for over 115 plus for that backfield it duo. It is crazy. It's insane. Um, so it looks like the ca- the Lions have the advantage right now. In what ways do you see the Cowboys having the advantage if they do it all? I, I think one thing is is what, what I mentioned earlier. Just In case about, home field. What I mentioned earlier about the ball distribution um, the Cowboys still have several weapons mm-hmm. on offense that we haven't seen everything from. So there's still somewhat of the potential for an element of surprise. And also, like, they can't put adequate coverage on everybody. Somebody is going to get some chances. And so if the Cowboys can take advantage of that and minimize their mistakes, they should be good. As far as the Cowboys' defense, um, and you could – Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I mean that genuinely because I there's still some film to watch. But I feel like the fact that Detroit does so many things underneath could end up working to the Cowboys' advantage in terms of where their most aggressive and quickest players tend to be, mm-hmm. in theory. Um, so I that's just one of the things that I kind of picked out. Also, also, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, <laughs> Jared Goff, <laughs> he... <laughs> No, it just popped up in my head. Jared Goff, he actually doesn't respond that well to pressure. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like the vibe of this defense, I feel like they're just so ready to get at him. Mm -hmm. They're so ready to get at him. And I feel like if they do, then that could throw him off his game as well. Because it's like you said about the Seahawks game. Everybody's calling that the perfect game because they had no incompletions. Mm -hmm. Good for them. (laughs) But... (laughs) But that's not the only thing that makes a game the perfect game. And it's like you said, there were some decisions there that were questionable. And there are some situations where it's like, okay, you got no incompletions, but look at the things that could have gone wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I feel like our defense is primed and ready to take advantage of those situations. I think the only advantage that you have, I'll say two. I'll say the quarterback. Okay. And I, even though I do respect what – I have a lot of respect for what Jared Goff has done in going to uh, Detroit and kind of reinventing himself and whatever the case may be. Um, but I also will say this is a – I can't talk about it yet. This is a Mike Zimmer game. This is mm-hmm. – to me, this is the game I think people were saying, like, what game was it? Like, this is why you hired Mike Zimmer. What game was it? The Ravens. Probably. I think Probably. it was the right. It was the same. It's like, well, it maybe right nah, there. this game right here yeah. with this offensive line and what you're dealing with defensively, this is, to me, the game where you're going to need Mike Zimmer to go deep in his bag and try to do some things to counter what they want to do offensively, mm-hmm. trip him up a little bit, show and go coverages, dropping guys out of coverage, into coverage, blitzing, like – they're going to have to mix up some things to get pressure because I don't need – don't, respectfully, I don't need to see no more from the front four yeah. as far as them being able to get pressure. We have seen they are struggling there without their top pass rushers to be expected and going up against this line. I don't think it's just going to magically get better. <laughs> so that's, this is, that's the advantage that I think you have is that you have the defensive mind – like a Todd Bowles that had some success with the Buccaneers and some of the things exotic things he did. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, because I watched the Bucks game in my car while I was sitting outside. <laughs> and Good. yes, that's you have a coordinator <laughs> that can do that. Now you have reinforcements out there now mm-hmm. too. So maybe I don't know how that affects like what you can do in the secondary with maybe an Amani uh, Ayo rather playing yeah. instead of a Kalen Carson. Or a um, or a Duran Bland, so it's kind of like man in that regard, but we'll see. I'm gonna go momentum um, because okay. granted, yeah, you have uh, the Lions that are coming off of a bye week, but sometimes you can get teams caught slipping. And not saying I agree. Dan Campbell and the Lions are gonna come out here just half stepping because realistically, that's probably not gonna happen. But I say Mike McCarthy and Zimmer, you use the mem- momentum that you have. Let's the run game thing. was yeah. the best it's been all season. It can get better, but it has been the best. Um, as far as you mentioning 
Uh, you're seeing a little bit of what your other wide receivers can do. Jalen Tolbert, Kevontae Turpin having one of his best games this year. Uh, I think you use that. Mike Zimmer, you're cooking without your top two pass rushers. Uh, your linebackers are playing really well right now. So I say you use the momentum um, that you have and you just kind of carry that over because it's been Giants, then Steelers, now you got the Lions. Granted, the Giants, different story. But <laughs> granted, you still had to, you know, kind of flip the script a little bit of the season at that point of the year. So, yeah, I'm going to say go momentum. But up next, we're going to break down this matchup a little bit more. And we're talking about how the Cowboys or how the Lions can cause the Cowboys the most problems. We'll be right back here on Girl Stop, Boy Stop. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the Playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYSVIP. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYSVIP. We know that juicy, cheesy, grilled-to-perfection burger sounds amazing, but it does sound like something is missing. Pepsi, baby! The yin to this burger's yang. Burgers and Pepsi go together like, well, like burgers and Pepsi. This perfect blending of flavors makes every bite of lettuce, every sesame seed on the bun, and every sip of that crisp, refreshing, ice-cold cola. A journey to Foodopia. Burgers, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. At Jigsaw Dating, we obviously want the Cowboys to bring that sixth ring home. But to be honest, we're more focused on finding the person who will put a ring on your finger. That's why we created a dating app that reveals your face through meaningful conversation. So you can date deeper. Because it's personality that matters the most, not looks. Join Jigsaw Dating today. Dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. The Dickey family always mandated that the only Polish-style sausage worthy of their restaurant must have high-quality coarse ground beef and pork, rich spices, and fresh natural casings. We still serve it to this day, and it's so popular, Dickey's sausage has been named the official sausage of the Dallas Cowboys. The perfect matchup on game day. Dickey's Barbecue Pit. No one outsmokes us. Order at Dickey's.com. For groups, call 866-BARBECUE. Dibs on the ribs. Cowboys Nation, Dallas Cowboys United, presented by Globe Life, is now exclusively in the Dallas Cowboys app. Join the official fan club today to receive access to the all-new Cowboys Drops feature, team news and pre-sale access, and fan and kid of the game. Download the app now to join. Stay connected with the Dallas Cowboys on your connected TV. Catch up on all Cowboys content like player interviews, weekly TV shows, podcasts, docuseries like Deep Blue, and much, much more. Download the Cowboys Now app on Amazon Fire, Roku, and Apple TV. Yeah, we have all the podcasts, including this one, Girls Talk, Boys Talk, presented by Jigsaw. Make sure to tune in on app on the app if you have not been able to catch us on YouTube or Twitter um, and all of our shows on DallasCowboys.com. But we've got some more fun to talk about. I don't know if this is fun, though. It's Yeah, it's not really uh, fun. I'm stressed out. Yeah, it's not really fun. It's kind of stressed out. It's going to stress y'all out a little bit. The Cowboys are banged up. How can the Lions cause the most problems for this team? Hold on. I feel like I, I wrote something down about this on earlier. <laughs> on the defensive side? Yeah, let's start with defense. Let's start with defense. I mean, the Lions offense, I mean, honestly, like I said, it's it's their offensive line. Yep. <laughs> God dang, brother. Yep. These are some big people. <laughs> and they do so many things well. And then also, too, when you talk about, you know, their motion rate, 45% motion rate, one of the highest in the NFL, just the way – they use play action to manipulate uh, defenses and stuff like that. It's this th – they can hurt you because they can really have the, – they're not 
pushing the ball downfield like crazy right now, mm -hmm. but they still can have explosive plays that aren't big plays. Does that make sense? Like, and so with with their run game and it being it's so married to their pass game, like they work as a system as a unit. Now you have to get one of those things to not be working so good. And I'm assuming that you know hopefully we're wanting the Cowboys to be like stopping the run, but that's honestly. If you let them run the ball, they're going to have success. So you just got to somehow trip up their run game. You got to put them in a uh, third and long, mm, second and long. I was just about long. to mention that. Like, yeah, go ahead. Go um, ahead. Because I, I was thinking about what you meant by explosive plays and aren't big plays. And I was like, yeah, they do really have their timing right when it comes to what they want to do and when. Because they do seem to have a knack for staying out of those situations that a defense would want to put them in, like those third and long situations. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I feel like that's probably going to be, if it's okay to you know speak a little bit more philosophically that way, it's just what they do in certain situations. It's the fact that those ideal situations that you're looking for in order to do certain things, they seem to be really good at just being like, oh, you thought you were about to get that third and long. No, it's not happening. Yeah. yeah. And guys running wide open, I mean, like, their scheme... <laughs> And, and they seem to be, like, really good when it comes to uh, getting yak yardage, um, yeah, which, you know, on one hand, like I said earlier, I'm like, well, they do so much underneath that could work to the Cowboys' advantage. But if those receivers do get that ball in their hands, they're able to do a lot with it. Yes. Yeah. So, and like you were saying, it's like if we've got o Oruwarie, I'm trying to say his name, if we got AO on one yeah. side, we still haven't seen him be, like, truly, truly, like, mm -hmm. challenged. Mm -hmm. Um and so it'll be interesting to see how how they handle situations. Say like the that. question again. With a banged up Cowboys team, sorry, it's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> how can the Lions cause the most problems offensively? Yeah. Oh my God! Uh, op you said offensively Cow spe specifically for their offense. How can they cause the most problems for this Cowboys defense? Yeah, it's just yeah, it's so. just the way they run the ball. Yeah. I mean, they can do it in so many ways. They're gonna hit you with tight end screens. They're gonna pull and pin their guards. They're going to, like, it's it's so much that they do. They have draw plays. And both of their running backs are receiving threats, mm -hmm. but also can just run the ball down your throat. So mm -hmm. it's like, you don't get a break. You know what I'm saying? When you see one guy trot off, you like, all right, yeah. <laughs> we, know he, we know he ain't catching nothing out the backfield. False! <laughs> they both can, and they will both make you pay, to your point, with the underneath routes and some of the stuff they do. It's going to be very important that the Cowboys... And we talked about it the other week. When you get a chance to make the play, you got to make it. Mm. You got to make that tackle because the yak yarders, to your point with this team, that's really where they find a lot of success. They do they do short things. It's like the 49ers. They do little intermediate things, yeah. but they cause you to mess up. And then it's a big play. If you're out of position, then it's a big play. So, And that's why you, you see they're not like attacking deep downfield, but they are having big plays downfield because their guys that's will get thing. past you mm. and say bye. And so, not in the mood for that. Yeah, um, and, and it's like you don't want to get complacent. <laughs> like, what you just said, that's the thing. It's like they don't attack down the field. And so, it's like you just don't want those guys to get complacent thinking that nothing's going to happen back not there. Not often, mm -hmm. but their first play of the freaking game against the, the, the Rams, like, first play, play action, straight down, like, straight. Like, the, literally, the slot receiver just goes right past yeah. the corner, and it's a TD. Like, that's that's what they will do as well. These people are Looney Tunes. <laughs> so then let me ask you, who has the biggest test? Everybody. But who has the biggest test for this defense? Oh, Barnacles. Who? It's, it, it's the interior defensive line. Mm. Because the teams that have been able to give them issues are teams that have stout defensive lines. When you talk about, even so, um, when you talk about, who, who is the player for the Rams? Who do they have on the interior now? Jesus, it's not it's not Aaron Donald. Yeah. He's gone. Anyway, they have a DT that can hold double teams and control the line of scrimmage. The Buccaneers, Vita Vea, controlled the line of scrimmage, made it a problem for them. Um, the Seahawks were down. Byron Murphy, that showed in this game, uh, in that past game. Hankins did what he could or whatever, some of the rotational guys, but... This this game is to me right now. It ain't about the secondary. It yeah. ain't about the linebackers. They don't have to play superhumans. It's about the defensive tackles and if they 
can literally keep the linebackers clean mm -hmm. and let them come up and make tackles because these guys can get up to your second level very quickly and make it hard on your linebackers and wear them out very quickly in how they run the ball. They will make you chase them, mm -hmm. and they will run right at you too. So then let me ask you this, uh, Jazz. Have you seen enough from Mozzie Smith and Linval Joseph to be able to contain those double teams? I believe in their ability to do it. <laughs> Have I seen enough to feel confident? Yeah. No. I, I, I feel like there was a Mike McCarthy press conference recently where he was like, I'm comfortable, <laughs> not confident. And I think that's how I feel about Mozzie and Joseph right now. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I, I like the direction that they're going in. I like what I've seen from them the past couple of weeks, absolutely. Um, but when it comes to you know snap after snap, do I feel like they're going to do enough in order to – I'm assuming we're talking about getting the Cowboys a win. Yeah, um, yeah I, I've seen enough to feel, to feel comfortable, not necessarily confident. Yeah. But here's the thing, though. When it comes to Jared Goff, and, you know, this is supporting your point um, about this being a game for the DTs, um, he, he's very human. And it's like, I know that his reputation is making him seem like, you know, just one of the best quarterbacks right now. But once again, if that Seahawks game turns out to be an outlier and not the start of a trend, then he's actually turning the ball over at a relatively high rate compared to his touchdowns, right? So I think it's going to really be up to the defense to really try to make him make a mistake, to affect his timing, to affect his focus, and make him make a mistake. And so I feel like if they can do that, because like, the, the Seahawks game, yeah, they scored 40-some points. I think, what, like 42? But before that, it was all 20 or less, mm -hmm. you know, and this defense has been good at holding teams to around 20 or less. And so I feel like if the defense can do that, then all we have to do is hope that the offense does their job and scores. Uh, in regard to the offensive mm -hmm. line, um, Ragnaro, their center, he's coming off of a peck. He had a full practice today. I'm Ooh. assuming they're probably doing some walk. Yeah. through type stuff too. Um, we'll need to keep an eye on what his status is because I think that that's been irritating him a bit, even though he is back from that injury. What they'll do is move Glasgow, uh, their um, left guard to center, yeah. if he's not able to go. So when you talk mm -hmm. about the interior, if Ragnaro isn't 100%, or even if Glasgow is the guy that is going advantage. to be taken, yes, it would be a, a lesser... <laughs> Um, a lesser opponent in a sense of what you will be doing, dealing with with Ragnarok because he controls that whole operation. Um, and, and in regard to their, their running backs too, like there, here's another thing. I think the Cowboys as well, like love Jameer Gibbs to infinity. He no like to pass block. <laughs> You know, like it at all. Um, you know, David Montgomery is definitely the more of the, the guy that's able to take on the physicality of that. So also, too, when you're talking about, like, I look at, like I said, this is a Zimmer situation mm -hmm. for me. How is he going to manufacture pressure on uh, early downs? This offensive line, as great as they are, has struggled with tris twist stunts and some of those things going on, some of the deception, some of the shifts that you can do yeah. as well, like alignment shifts, moving guys really wide out and stuff like that and having them loop around and things like that. How do they find ways to get pressure on early downs? Because you don't, to your point, they have a bag for every third yeah. down situation you put them in. Yeah. The best thing you can do is put them in a third and long or something. That's something I should have asked Mozzie about. It's four down territory, too, because you know Dan Campbell. That yeah. hurt them in the game last year, too. It was like, you don't need to go for it right now, Dan. Like, right. It's all right. Y'all right. mad I'm at fine. us. Y'all need to be mad at y'all coach. Stop. No, Shoot. We what should have asked Mozzie about that whole twist stunt thing because when he did that in the game, what game was that? Was that the Giants game where he did that? And so I brought it up to him kind of as a joke. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, we're not going to see no more of that, right? Ha. But yeah. now I'm <laughs> The ha is crazy. You might, why do you say ha like oh that? Oh, my God. Be <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm like, wait, are we going to see more of that? Yeah. <laughs> They're going to go quick, yeah. Did you watch? Did you watch any of them? So I was gonna ask y'all about if the Cowboys could do a little bit of what they do defensively with their four down linemen. They play really wide, mm -hmm. which, granted, I mean you know this, it uh, opens up the middle of the field. However, they trust their guys to get home. So yes. there's a little bit of a difference there. Um, but do you think that maybe the Cowboys could kind of incorporate some of that a little bit, or? Just our DTs are not able to 
handle the middle of the field as uh, well. No, it's it's going to be like the linebackers will be big. Uh, you're going to to stop the run. I think we're going to mm. see three linebackers on the field a lot. Okay. What, so that's going to be what wasn't um uh 50 uh wasn't he on Kendricks Eric. Kendricks wasn't he on the injury report Mm-mm. he no. went on there ain't around with him Mm-mm. no nothing at no, all he's not on there all right, <laughs> no, nothing that uh, would show up on an injury report is wrong with him it was, it was Maris but quad but he was a full predictor. okay so yeah you're probably later. gonna see Maris little foul Demarion overshone and Eric Kendricks out there. You know there what's funny? Because I know what you're getting at with Kendricks. <laughs> but I was um, just asking. I wouldn't. Y'all, don't make a scene. <laughs> I'm not making a scene. I just know what you're getting at. I'm but not. Jared Jared Goff was asked about the Cowboys linebackers, and he was like, "Yeah, you got Kendricks, who's who's doing a really good job of of uh, keeping the li- uh, the other linebackers on the same page and and making sure that they move around." And like, I was like, making sure they move around. Okay, right. interesting that you phrase that that way. I don't I, remember the exact quote. I got to find it. But it was yeah. something to the effect that, like, Kendrick is, like, the the uh, conductor and mm-hmm. the other linebackers are, are the orchestra. Well, yeah, he's the green dot. Mm-hmm. So, But I will say, how do you – Sam Laporta, their, um, their tight end, he's had a bit of a slow start. I know he had a pretty serious injury last year that I can't remember exactly what it was. <laughs> but um, he's 12 of 14 with 147 yards to start the season. Mm. Sam Laporta, who had a breakout season last yeah. year. People really loved what he was doing. Um, he does most of his work in line. So um, I, I and, and he's doing some things in a slot, but they're just not using him. They'll do some tight end screens with him. But he was a real receiving threat last year. I don't know. Again, I can't remember. Was it ACL? Um, he had a serious injury last year. I wonder if he's still kind of slow getting back. Very possible. Whatever the case may be. Right. So I don't know. If you put Maris, because if you're going to go three linebackers. Hamstring. Th- hamstring. Okay. Last year, mm-hmm. that was a hammy. It was, it was that bad? Did he tear it? I know it was bad because he was like, when I seen him, I think he got carded off. I remember when I seen him, I was like, Lord, <laughs> not Sam, Jesus. So, yeah, anyway, thank you for looking that up. Um, mm-hmm. He hasn't really gotten going the way they want to get him going, I believe. I wonder with the three linebackers, like, you know, Cowboys needing extra run support if they're going to try to attack a Maris Lewifow in coverage. Um, and if that isn't working, I don't want them to have to allocate a safety to help out with Sam Laporta. So keeping him on this trend where he just kind of non-existent is kind of what I'm looking for. Hopefully the <laughs> linebackers can hold up in coverage against Big Sam. Yeah. I feel like this is a, a good time to bring up if, if I may, you the, of the conversations that, that I had with some of the defensive players in the locker room, because I thought about it when you said we were going to talk about some something fun. And I was like, somebody else talked about fun today. And I was like, oh, it was Maris. Yeah. Because I was talking to him like, y'all y'all know, y'all see him in the locker room. He's Absolutely. so chill. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. But like when you watch him on the field, he's like violent and he's just like, time. and I was like, is there a switch that flips? <laughs> and he was like, I'm just out there having fun. And yeah. I was like, oh, okay, so just like being hostile and aggressive towards the opponent. That's, that's just having fun. He's mm-hmm. like, yeah. It's fun. And I'm like, okay, I, I'm into it. I get it. But um, it, but here's a good question for both of you guys. Because one of the things that Maris said, um, he was talking about their play style. And he was mm-hmm. like, he was like, yeah, we just focus on being aggressive and making sure that we, you know, dominate the person in front of us. And, you know, I was like, so you feel like if you do that, the scheme pretty much takes care of itself. And he was like, actually, you, actually, yeah, I feel like our play style is more important. And so I, I went to Osa and I was like, well, what do you think about y'all's play style and the importance of it? And he was like, yeah, I feel like our play style is our greatest strength. And I was like, OK, Maris said that if y'all just focus on the play style, then the scheme will take care of itself. Do you agree or disagree? And he was like, yeah, I would agree with that. So how do y'all feel about that when you think about what we're seeing in terms of play style over the last couple of weeks from the defense? Like, would you would you agree that them being aggressive, them being fast, aggressive, like really going after their assignments mm-hmm. is more important than what the specific scheme is? Because that seems to be how they feel based on what they said. Uh- that's a tough one. Um, I would say from what, what you're asking, from what we've seen, do we agree with it? Yeah. Or do you feel like, one more time, one more time, ask the question. Just, just from what you've seen, would you agree with them that if they maintain that play style, that the scheme will take care of itself, that the play style is more okay. important than the scheme right now? I would now? say yeah. I would say yeah, uh, just because I feel if when they had to, as far as like play more physical against the Giants, they did, mm-hmm. and everything took care of itself. 
Um, last, same with against the Steelers, but I think that, you know, like they mentioned, it was the details as well. So it's, it comes hand in hand. You got to play physical, but you also got to know your assignments. So I wouldn't necessarily agree with, like, the scheme takes care of itself. I would just say it's just an added more emphasis when you're playing more physical and then – Am I saying this right? I yeah, it's right. You're saying if, it right. If you're, say, if you're playing more physical, and then everything will just kind of fall in line. There we go. Yeah, I mean, ding, ding, ding. It, it, I mean, to your point, like if you're going to if play <laughs> style is more important than the scheme right now, then you just got to dominate your one on one matchups. But yeah. I will say, I think it is in, it's important to keep in mind that their play style this week has been contingent in last week were contingent upon an opponent. Um, mm. Giants, not super motion-y and shifts and all that stuff at the line of scrimmage. Steelers, not, not super, super fancy, smashy and yeah. all that at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Uh, Detroit, they do the stuff that the Saints do. Yeah. That mm. take away your play style. You, 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 this week, you got to rely more on the scheme and the play style will follow. Because the scheme, like this is a game – with the Lions, they do so many creative different things and put you in a lot of stressful situations. Like, it's it's going to be crazy important to keep them in third and longs because if they are yes. in a fourth yeah. down that's manageable, you're staying on the field. Yes. You don't have, like, the room for error mm -hmm. is very slim within this. So it's like they probably, I would guess, have been in the film room more than normal. They would need to be. because the Cowboys? Is, yes, the Cowboys defense. So mm -hmm. they can have, to your point, that play style. So when they see when they see Sam Laporte's emotion mm -hmm. like, across the formation, they might go with him, but there's no panic. And also, too, Jared Goff, will, he'll catch you slipping. He'll catch you substituting guys out and stuff, trying to add up to what they're doing or match up to what they're doing. So for me... The, I think the play style in which they've played with the last couple of weeks is great, and I love it, but can you have that same play style when you do have teams that are 45% in motion rate, that have all of this deception and stuff at the line of scrimmage? Can you, can you switch that on? So I think that their film study this week has to be so de detailed, oriented, so they're not shaken up by some of the stuff that the Lions are going to do because they are going to – put you in situations. And that's why I said Zimmer has to be the aggressor. Because yeah. if you let them dictate what you're yeah. doing, it's dead. Like, <laughs> and, and I get the idea that that's what they're focused on. They didn't say anything suggesting that they would, mm -hmm. like, actually ignore the scheme or anything oh, yeah, like that. Just, that, just for anybody listening. Yeah. Um, but I do think that they've had the opportunity to see what it feels like to play that aggressive and to play that fast. Um, and I do feel like, well, I don't even feel like. They actually admitted that, like, yes, while they do miss Micah and D-Law, their confidence has gone up seeing what they're able to do without, you know, two impactful players on the field with them. Um, and both of them also talked about the fact that J. Lou's attitude is infectious. Um, oh, Osa, Osa was like, yeah, J. Lou, he's mm -hmm. always been like that, but it does seem like it's it's spreading among the defense this year. So I think they like how it feels to feel confident and to go out in the field and be comfortable being that physical and being that fast and being that aggressive. And so they do want to get to the point where they don't have to think so much about what they're doing so that they can allow themselves to maintain that attitude and maintain that play style while also taking care of their assignments. All right, well, we gotta so take they pull that off. Second break. I'm so sorry to cut you off because okay. Jazz in here in my ear. We gotta take our <laughs> second break and we'll wrap things up when we come right back. The Dickey family always mandated that the only Polish-style sausage worthy of their restaurant must have high-quality coarse ground beef and pork, rich spices, and fresh natural casings. We still serve it to this day, and it's so popular, Dickey Sausage has been named the official sausage of the Dallas Cowboys. The perfect matchup on game day. Dickey's Barbecue Pit. No one outsmokes us. Order at Dickey's.com. For groups, call 866-BARBECUE. Dips on the ribs. We know that juicy, cheesy, grilled-to-perfection burger sounds amazing, but it does sound like something is missing. Pepsi, baby! The yin to this burger's yang. Burgers and Pepsi go together like, well, like burgers and Pepsi. This perfect blending of flavors makes every bite of lettuce, every sesame seed on the bun, and every sip of that crisp, refreshing, ice-cold cola. A journey to Foodopia. Burgers, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. 
At Jigsaw Dating, we obviously want the Cowboys to bring that sixth ring home. But to be honest, we're more focused on finding the person who will put a ring on your finger. That's why we created a dating app that reveals your face through meaningful conversation so you can date deeper. Because it's personality that matters the most, not looks. Join Jigsaw Dating today, dating partner of the Dallas Cowboys. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the Playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYSVIP. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYSVIP. Stay connected with the Dallas Cowboys on your connected TV. Catch up on all the Cowboys content like player interviews, weekly TV shows, podcasts, docuseries like Deep Blue, and much more. Download the Cowboys Now app on Amazon Fire, Roku, and Apple TV. All right, real fast, ladies. we got to wrap things up, but who is your X Factor on defense? Go. Go. I'm a, I know I keep saying it, but I'm going to say Overshone. Just because with what you were talking about with how much motion they do, I just feel like Overshone is one of those guys who, like, if you're watching film, like, look for the ball and you're going to see Overshone. So if anything does start to break down, just for some reason, he's a guy who I'm like, well, he's going to be the one person who gets to, to where he needs to be. So I feel like if he's on his stuff on Sunday, then, you know, they'll they'll have a much better chance than if he's not. I'm going to go A.O. Amani Aruwarie. Let's go. I said it right again. Yes, you did. Uh, no, I'm going to say AO uh, because I feel like the corners are going to be tested. And, of course, Trayvon Diggs is probably not going to be one of those guys. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go AO um, with the deep shots non field. That was something that you had mentioned mm-hmm. about. Um, and, yeah, I, I think this is going to be a game for him, too, especially with Kaitlyn Carson out. Um, and knowing that he has to continue to step up because last last week the Steelers really tested him a little bit. So I think that Amani knows that this is something that you know you have to prove the fact that you can be a playmaker. Uh, mm-hmm. So I think this is I think this is a game for him. Yeah, to your point, um, the <laughs> Lions are 32nd in vertical routes. So again, not doing the whole down the field mm-hmm. deep pass thing that often, but they are 15th in crossing routes, which mm-hmm. has given this Dallas secondary some issues. Uh, Amani is going to have to be able to fight through that trash and and stay attached to his receiver. Um, Mine is, I'm cheating. Uh, It's just going to be the front seven in general. Uh, Not cheating. Yeah, it's cheating. The the Lions, (laughs) Lions offensive line is only giving up seven sacks, um, but they have given up a considerable amount of pressure specifically in the last few weeks. Um, This, again, control the line of scrimmage, allow, you know, your pass rushers, the feed that you have and your linebackers to uh, get home and affect the quarterback. And I think it's just going to make things easier, but these guys are going to have to trust their eyes. Otherwise, Jamison Williams is going to cook them down the field. Hopefully the Cowboys are doing the cooking on Sunday. We'll be back here on Girls Talk, Boys Talk with more breaking down of this week six matchup between the Cowboys and the Lions. See you all tomorrow. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!